in microcontrollers, it's so often desirable to have some kind of timer for operations that they ought, they will typically have a built-in counter slash timer hardware. And so what this does is um, provide specialized hardware for counting events. And that way the, the microcontroller, the processor, uh, doesn't have to burden itself with taking care of this. So you can either use a counter timer to count an event. Say you have people going through a turnstile or bottles going past uh, a sensor on a conveyor belt. Then the counter can keep track of those uh, instances and it can allow the processor and the microcontroller to do other things. So you don't have to tie down your program with watching out for these events. Or you can use a counter timer to generate time delays. So if you want something to happen periodically at regular intervals of time, you can use the timer to generate um, a signal at these fixed intervals of time. And again, you don't have to uh, put this into your code so your code can be doing other things while the counter timer is taking care of uh, counting events. So here's the counter timer and it can have two sources of input. It could either uh, come from an oscillator. In that case, it would be used as a timer. So an oscillator is another word for you know clock or an external source. And this could be a, a light beam switch, for example, that triggers the counter every time uh, it generates a pulse. And so then it would be a counter. And that is input into a count, counter register. And this keeps track of the number of instances. So every time um, a signal comes in here, then the counter register is going to increment. So it'll go up by one. And once it reaches a certain value, either its maximum value or another predetermined value, it raises a flag. And that flag can be used uh, to tell the microcontroller, the microprocessor, when to perform some certain action. So say after 50 bottles come down the line, we want to um, extend an actuator to push a box off of the conveyor belt or something or stop the conveyor belt. Well, then when the counter reaches 50, it'll set a flag and then our program can automatically go into uh, handling that event. In AVR microcontrollers, uh, they have different numbers of timers. They can have anywhere from one to six timers, timer counters, and they can be either 8-bit or 16-bit timers. In the microcontroller that we're using, there are three timers. Two of them are 8-bit timers, so that means that they can count from 0 to 255. Uh, that's 256 pulses. Um, after 256 pulses, then they drop back down to 0. Or, and then there's one 16-bit timer. So this can count 65,536 pulses. They behave in much the same way, the 8-bit and 16-bit timers. They just have different um, capacities. So just like whenever we were working with uh, general purpose input-output pins, there were specific registers that we had to manipulate to get our desired behavior. Well, with timer counters, there are registers that we have to uh, configure in order to get the desired behavior. So here's again that figure of the timer counter. And we'll go over in this slide some of the registers or the registers to, uh, that we need to work with. So first we have TCNTN. And the N here is for the number, the counter number. So in the 328P, there are three counters. So it could be TCNT0, TCNT1, or TCNT2. Um, okay, and this is where the actual count is stored. So whenever a signal comes in, um, this number gets incremented. So TCNT is where we keep track of the number of instances. And then EOV, 0, 1, 2, or 3. So say from now on, we'll just say we're working with timer 0. So TO, TOV0 would be the timer overflow flag. So that's when the timer goes from 255 back down to zero. So the timer's counting up 253, 254, 255. And then on the next pulse, it's not going to be able to count any higher because it's only an 8-bit counter. And so it'll drop back down to zero. It'll go 254, 255, zero. And when it does that drop, then this flag, the TOV0 flag, is going to get set. This flag is a bit, and it goes from zero to one. And that lets the 
microprocessor know that the counter has overflowed. The timer counter control register is where we will be um, doing most of the work because this is the register whose bits are used to configure the counter. For example, is the counter going to uh, use an external source or is it going to use uh, uh, the clock that the microprocessor is run, running off of? Um, that setting is found in the timer counter control register. Again, this is an 8-bit um, register, and so there are eight different bits to set, so we have several different um, parameters that we can set for the timer counter control. So TCNT0 is a register, TCCR0 is a register, but TOV0 is a bit, so it's a flag, so it's just one bit, and it's found in another register. And then we also have um, these two registers are for something else, and we'll talk about it later. Um, the, the counter can be used in different modes. Uh, the output compare register and output compare match flag are for a different mode of the uh, counter, and we'll talk about that towards the end of this video. So again, um, to reiterate, if we're using the internal clock, then we refer to it as a timer. If we're using an external source, it's referred to as a counter. So now we're going to go over timer zero specifically. So all this material is applicable to the other timers, but it's just nice to have one specific example to work with. So timer zero and the micro AVR microcontroller. What is this register again? This is the register where the count value is stored. What is this again, POV zero? That's the flag that's set whenever the counter goes uh, over overflows from 255 back down to zero. And then we have the output compare, and we'll look at that later on. And then here is the register that holds um, interrupt timer interrupt flag register. So we have three different timers, timer counters, and all of their flags are stored in this one register. So you can see TOV0 is the overflow flag for timer zero. And here's TOV1, it's the overflow flag for timer one, et cetera, et cetera. So TOV0 is found in the TIFR, timer interrupt flag register. So many initialisms. Anyhow. And then the timer counter control register. And again, this is where we set up the counter. So we'll look at the bits of, of TCCR0. Um, first of all, the clock selector bits. If we're using uh, timer counter zero as a timer, then we can configure, um, well, actually, okay. I forgot that timer zero can be used as a counter too. So these bits set up how the, the input for the timer counter. Okay, so if they're all zeros, then the counter is stopped. If we have 001, then the input um, to the timer counter, the thing generating the pulses, is just the microprocessor clock. So if we're running at 8 megahertz, then uh, that, time, that timer counter is 0, TCNT 0, is going to go up um, every eighth of a microsecond. It's going to go up 8 million times in one second. Okay, so that would be 001. And then these other, these next four, these deal with what's called prescaling. So we can slow down the input to the timer. And so we could have the uh, microprocessor clock divided by eight. So if we had 010, then the timer would be incrementing, TCNT0, the timer counter, would be incrementing a, a million times a second. So it would be one eighth the speed of the microprocessor clock. Or we could choose 011, and then we would be going at 1 64th the speed of the microprocessor clock. Um, or uh, the clock over 256 or the clock over 1024. And so these allow you to get longer delays out of your clock. Um, so, for example, uh, why you would want to do that, if you had no prescaling, then... Um, 
the delay, the maximum uh, time that the timer could manage would be 256 times one eighth of a microsecond. And I think that's 64 microseconds. So 256 times an eighth of a microsecond is 64 microseconds. So with an eight bit timer, it would overflow every 64 microseconds if you had no prescaler. So you can slow it down a little bit and get a longer time. So if you had this prescaler, then it would overflow 1024 times 64 microseconds. Um, we'll certainly look at prescalers, prescaling more uh, probably in the next video and uh, in some of the work that we're doing later. And then also we can use an external clock source and the clock selector bits um, choose external clock source. Okay. And then we have the WGM bits. This is for timer mode. And we'll talk about this. Um, so we're in this video, we're going to look at normal mode and CTC mode. And then um, our, a topic later on we'll probably get to would be uh, PWM. So the timer counter can be used to generate a pulse width modulation signal, which is another thing that's commonly used in microcontrollers. So the specialized hardware uh, can do that. So for our purposes using timer counter, WGM bits are either going to be 0, 0 or 0, 1 for normal or CTC mode. And next, we're going to talk about normal mode for a little while. And then after we've done that, we'll talk about CTC mode. So these are just different ways that the timer can operate. And then these other three bits, we're not going to look at those because they're not going to be used for our purposes now. Normal mode. This graph shows um, the TCNT register for timer zero. So TCNT zero um, as a function of time. So as time marches along, um, the, the timer counter value is going to keep increasing all the way until it reaches its maximum, which for an, an 8-bit timer is, is hex FF. And then once it reaches that on the next uh, time step, it's going to drop back down to zero. So here's a little animation of that. So the counter is increasing as time goes along. And then when it gets to zero, then the overflow flag is set. And then it keeps keeps going. So that flag is set until, um, until something resets it. So we could either do that manually or it, by writing to this bit, or if we're using interrupts, then it's handled automatically. And interrupts are another topic that we'll look at uh, in the future. But here's an example of writing a program um, to generate a delay. So we want to write a program that waits 14 machine cycles in normal mode. So machine cycles is just how fast you know pulses from the oscillator. And so if you want to translate that into time, you have to know how long each machine, machine cycle takes. So with an 8 megahertz clock, each machine cycle is one eighth of a microsecond. But anyway, the actual timing is for later. Right now, we're just going to write a program that's going to wait 8, 14 machine cycles. So every time um, we have a machine cycle, a pulse from the internal oscillator, then the counter is going to go up. So. We, we're going to look at the timer overflow flag. And when that flag is set, then um, that's how we know our counter is done counting. And so if we want it to count 14 cycles and then set the flag, then we can go ahead and preload a number into the timer counter register. So instead of starting that counter at zero and going all the way up to 255, we could start it at some other value like 120 and then it would only count up, you know, 135 instead of 255. And so that would result in a shorter um, time before the overflow flag is set. So if we want to wait 14 machine cycles, we can just do this math. 256 minus 14 is 242. So 14 pulses from now, if we, if we load the counter register with 242 and 14 pulses, the overflow flag will be set. So we're going to put 42 into the register. And then we need to um, configure the clock. 
So 001 is no prescaler. So the counter is going to go at the same speed as the microprocessor. And then we need to set up the, um, the configure whether the timer is in normal or CTC mode. And so we're just going to use normal mode for now. So this would be 00. zero. And then here's the code that we could use. Um, we just need io.h and okay, so we're going to toggle port B pin 5. So we need io.h and we set up uh, port B pin 5 to be output. So we're saying data direction register B is a bunch of zeros and a one for bit 5. So one left shifted 5 is all zeros and a single one at bit 5. And then port B, um, okay, this sets all the port B pins or bits to be zeros, I'm sorry, to be ones, except a zero uh, at pin five. So this means we have all, we're enabling all the internal pull up resistors for some reason, but the main point is that we have a zero for bit five. Oh, that's not right, because we did a bitwise AND. Hmm. Okay, so in the example, let's see if I can have them next to each other. We say that port B AND equals uh, tilde 100, where one left shifted five. So that's equivalent to saying port B is equal to port B AND converted one left shifted five. So that and equals right here is just shorthand. If you want to say assign a value to the register as a result of its old value with some operation, then you can just do the and equal sign and get rid of having to write uh, this port B again. So that's what this refers to. So my point is that this line here and this line here are equivalent. And again, let me just expand this. So this is equivalent to um, inverted. And so that's bitwise and with this value. Okay, so the result of that is that after this operation, um, all these bits that have ones here, those are going to be unchanged in port B, and this bit with a zero is going to be a zero. So what we're doing is we're masking bit five of the port, of the port B register to zero. So that's what this uh, line of code does. The comment wasn't too clear, so it should say mask bit five to zero. <sighs> all right, now let's regain our perspective. What we're doing here is that we're toggling port B pin five every 14 machine cycles. So we've gone ahead and set up pin five as an output and gone ahead and set it to be low voltage. And now we're entering our uh, while loop. And we go ahead and preload the timer counter register for timer zero with 242. And then we write the value that we determined to the timer counter control register, which was all zeros except a one. Uh, let's see if I can go back see all zeros except a one right here. And then, we're just going to sit here in this loop and wait for the overflow flag to be set. So this bitwise operation um, is going to look at um, a certain bit. So let me pull up the camera again. Uh, last one. All right. So we're looking at this line here and what it does. So let me just um, expand this again. So this TOV0 is a value that the compiler knows already. Um, and that's kind of like 
uh, DDRB, we don't have to define that. Well, TOV0, we don't have to define that either. It's just known that this for this microcontroller, the TOV0 is a zero. If we instead wrote TOV2, then that would be equivalent to writing six because it's bit six. So this is equivalent to this right here. It's equivalent to writing uh, T, I, S, R, uh, and one left shifted zero. Um, so that's equivalent to T, I, F, R, and um, final one. So this is going to be false as as long as this bit right here is zero. But whenever this bit goes to one, the overflow flag for bit for timer zero, then this statement here is going to be true. So all this is going to be zero. And so this we're going to stay in this while loop until that flag goes to one. And then we're going to have one is not equivalent to zero. So we'll drop out of the while loop and we'll go ahead and Stop the timer, clear the overflow flag, toggle port B, and go back up to the top of the loop where we set this value in the counter, uh, start the timer, and then wait for the overflow flag. All right, so all this code is used to wait 14 machine cycles. And we'll just leave it at that for now. Okay, then how do you calculate the delay generated by the timer? I mentioned this already. Um, what you need to do is figure out how much each clock cycle lasts. And then if you know how many cycles it wakes, then the delay is the, the time uh, times the number of machine cycles. Um, so this slide talks about the same thing as in the previous example, except we're using a prescaler in this one. So if we, instead of like in the previous example where we wanted a certain number of machine cycles to delay, say now we want a certain amount of time to delay. So to figure out how, how, what value to load in the timer, we need to first figure out the period. Um, so, well, actually, this doesn't talk about prescaler necessarily. Okay. Excuse me. So, to find out what value to put in the counter in order to get a certain amount of time delay, here are the steps to do it. First of all, figure out the time between clock intervals. So, that's one over the frequency. So, for an 8 megahertz clock, the period is 1 over 8 megahertz, which is 1 eighth of a microsecond. Now, second step, does it divide the desired time delay by the period of the clock. So if we want a 1 microsecond delay and our period is an eighth of a microsecond, then step 2 will give us the value of 8. Step 3, we do a subtraction, 256 minus the value we got in step 2. Um, so for one microsecond delay, 256 minus eight would be 248. And then the final step, we load, we assign that value to the timer counter uh, register. So TCNT zero for timer zero. So if we said TCNT zero equals 248, then once we started the timer in one microsecond, the overflow flag would be set. That's the way we can generate some timing in our microcontroller. Another example. Assuming the clock is eight megahertz, um, write a program that toggles port B pin five every two milliseconds. So here are the calculations. Um, the nominal clock speed is an eighth of a microsecond, nominal clock period, eighth of a microsecond. And remember I said that, so 256 is the biggest 256 pulses is the most that an 8-bit timer can have, can count. And so if we had no prescaler, the biggest delay that this timer could generate would be 
uh, 0.125 microseconds times 256, which is 64 microseconds. But that's too small because we want a two millisecond delay. So we'll have to use some prescaler to slow down the input to the counter. So let's figure out what prescaler needs to be. I'm calling D the delay, so that's two milliseconds. N max would be the um, number of pulses the counter can count. So for an 8-bit counter, that's 256. And then T is what we figured here is the nominal period for the clock, so the machine clock. So this will give us um, a value for the prescaler. So we have 2 milliseconds divided by the product of 256 and um, an eighth of a microsecond. So this gives us 62.5 is the result of this, uh, these operations. And since 62.5 is not one of our choices, we'll choose the next bigger one. Uh, and that's 64. So we're going to use a prescaler of 64 for this example. Okay. So now our new, our scale period, the period, um, the amount of time between inputs to the clock, is going to be the machine period times the prescaler. So that's an eighth of a microsecond times 64, which is eight microseconds. So now if we're using this prescaler, every eight microseconds, our counter is going to increment. Now that we know how fast our counter increments, we know our delay, so that'll tell us how many increments we need, how many pulses to the counter we need. So here's the equation for that. The number of pulses is the delay divided by our um, period um, of pulses, the time between each pulse. So that's two milliseconds divided by eight microseconds, 250 pulses with this prescaler will take two milliseconds. So the value that we write into the timer counter register is 256 minus 250, which equals six. So here's the code for that. Um, I left off the include, but we configure pin five to be output. What does this line do again? Well, it masks bit five of the port B register to zero, which leaves all the other bits alone, but make sure the bit five is zero so that that output pin is low voltage. Now we run our while loop. We put our value in the counter register, six. Then we start the counter. So here's the timer counter control register. Um, and if you look back a few slides, you'll see what each of the bits are in this register. But um, this is, the two least significant bits are ones. So why is it not hex zero one like in the previous example? Well, because we're using a prescaler. So this gives us the counter operating in normal mode with a prescaler of 64. So that's what this line does. And then now we've got that same line of code where we just sit and pull, it's called polling, where we just keep checking the uh, timer zero overflow flag. Um, or the overflow flag for timer zero. So we just keep checking that, and that's what this while loop does. So as long as that flag is zero, we're just gonna sit here, and as soon as it stops to one, then this equality is no longer true, and we drop down to the next line. So we will stop the timer. Um, we will clear the overflow flag with this line, and then we will toggle port B, and then we'll return back up to the top of the while loop. So this is the same example as before. The difference, the only difference is that we have a, a different delay. Before we had 14 machine cycles, now we have a delay that we've calculated to be two milliseconds. So we have a different value in the timer counter register, and we have a different value in the timer counter control register. This is to get the prescaler, and this is to have a different number of pulses. So next we've got a couple of review questions. And I'll give you a second to think about each one. Which register holds the uh, timer overflow zero flag, TOV zero, and TOV one bits? It's the TIFR register. It stands for timer interrupt flag register. So that's where the interrupts from the timers are stored, those flags. So if we have, the second question is, if we have an eight megahertz clock, find, um, the timer counter value needed to generate a time delay of 20 microseconds. So normal mode, no prescaler. <clears throat> uh, 
you can work on this on your own. You can pause the video. I will work through it real quick, assuming this camera works. Okay, so we wanted, um, so F is eight megahertz, gives us the period is uh, 0.125 microseconds, and the delay that we want is 20 microseconds, I believe. 20 microseconds, and we're to use normal mode and no pre scaling. So, uh, timer counter control register zero, normal mode, no pre scaler is hex zero one. And 20 microseconds, um, the number of pulses that we need is equal to the delay divided by the period, so that's 20 times 10 to the negative 6 divided by. 0.125 times 10 to the negative 6. So that's 20 times 8, so 160 is the number of pulses. So PCNT0, the value that we load into the counter register, we're going to preload 256 minus 120 